This is the penultimate positional video in our series on the greatest players of all time in each position. And, to tell you the truth, it's the one which I've been dreading the most. From old school inside forwards to modern false nines, the position which could roughly be described as attacking midfield has possibly been blessed with more great players than any other on the pitch. To illustrate just how difficult it is to come up with a definitive seven, here is one that we made up of players who ultimately missed out on our final seven. Here's another one, and another one, and here's a fourth one. That's almost 30 world-class footballers who've missed out, and we could easily show you another three or four of those. Once again, we must remind you that anyone who has previously featured in this series in another position cannot feature here, nor can anyone who may be considered a striker and therefore will feature in our final video rather than this one. It is our seven, our opinion, and you will most likely disagree with it, but it's one which has been concluded following extensive consideration. Here are our seven greatest attacking midfielders of all time. Zinedine Zidane. When we made our list of the seven greatest players of all time, Zinedine Zidane was the one omission which caused more outrage in the comments than any other. Once again, this won't make me popular, but Zidane is a footballer overrated by a large number of football fans. He was incredibly gifted, elegance personified with the ball at his feet and capable of moments of sheer brilliance. He was also inconsistent though, and often a little quiet and ineffective, particularly in less high profile games. While Zidane was key to France's international successes in both 1998 and 2000, and Real Madrid's Champions League glory in 2002, he was neutralised in his first two Champions League finals with Juventus, and often struggled when man-marked by a top player like Roy Keane or Fernando Redondo. For that reason, Zidane makes our seven, but doesn't trouble the top three or four. A three-time FIFA World Player of the Year, Zidane won the Ballon d'Or once, in 1998. Bobby Charlton You can argue that Zinedine Zidane may have been a more gifted footballer than Bobby Charlton, but the consistency Zizou lacked, Charlton had in abundance. A prolific scorer from midfield, Charlton scored 10 or more goals in 14 of his 18 seasons as a professional footballer, and 29 goals in his best campaign. Arguably England's greatest ever footballer, Charlton was a tireless runner, a great technician, and when he hit a ball, it tended to stay hit. A survivor of the Munich air disaster, Charlton won league titles and a European Cup with Manchester United, and won the World Cup with England. He too won the Ballon d'Or once, in 1966, and he was, until recently, the all-time top scorer for both Man United and England. Zico a truly magnificent footballer, Zico's place among football's greatest players of all time has been damaged by the fact that he never won a World Cup. The greatest Brazilians have failed to get their hands on the prestigious trophy. Zico was part of that brilliant Brazil squad of 1982, who won the awe and affection of the world, but not Group C, getting knocked out by Italy. Pelé said Zico came closest of any player in terms of matching his style, and the public seemed to agree, nicknaming him the White Pelé. He scored an incredible 476 goals in 698 games at club level and enjoyed a similar record with Brazil. One of the finest dead ball specialists to have ever lived, Zico played his best football for Flamengo, but also played for Udinese in Italy and Kashima Antlers in Japan. He was short, slight, quick, purposeful and immensely gifted with a ball at his feet. Michel Platini The greatest French footballer of all time Michel Platini is certainly among the greatest attacking midfielders in the history of the game. He too was a goal-scoring machine, bagging 25 or more goals in 10 seasons as a player. That's a record that most world-class centre-forwards can only dream about. Like Zico, Platini was a free-kick specialist. He was also highly intelligent, fleet-footed, clinical in front of goal, and one of the best passes of a ball the game has ever known. He won league titles with Saint-Étienne and Juventus, a European Cup with the latter, and the Euros with France, top scoring at Euro 84 with 9 goals, as the tournament's second top scorer managed only 3. Platini won the Ballon d'Or 3 times and made the world team of the 20th century. Johan Cruyff When we released our video on the 7 greatest footballers of all time, Johan Cruyff came in 6th place, so it shows the immense quality in the attacking midfield position that he only comes 3rd here. It's difficult to pin the Dutch maestro down to a single position. The finest exponent of Holland and Ajax's so-called total football, Cruyff would glide about the pitch, taking up wide, central, deep and more advanced positions. 
He could have made the all-time top sevens of a handful of positions, but attacking midfield seems to be the best fit. Cruyff was a natural footballer. From a young age, he had wondrous technique and a real eye for a pass. He went on to become a genuine student of the game, leaving an indelible mark on the sport and bringing delight to millions. Cruyff scored and created goals for fun, monopolised possession of the ball and dominated countless matches. He won league titles with Ajax and Barcelona, three European Cups with the former and reached a World Cup final in 1974. Alfredo Di Stefano Another man who made our all-time top seven in fifth place on that occasion is Alfredo Di Stefano. Considered by many to be the most complete footballer in the history of the game, Di Stefano is another who is hard to pin down to a single position. At times, he played as an outright centre forward. At others, he dropped so deep, he looked more like a holding midfield player. Ultimately, it was all about getting him on the ball wherever he could do the most damage to the opposition. Di Stefano had a brilliant footballing brain, beautiful close control and an eye for a goal. He twinned all that with fantastic stamina, power and genuine pace. He made his name in a brilliant River Plate team in Argentina, before heading to the outlawed Colombian League and then on to Real Madrid. He spent 11 years with Real as the most important player in one of the greatest teams of all time. He scored 308 goals in 396 games for Los Blancos, winning 8 league titles and 5 consecutive European Cups. A two-time Ballon d'Or winner, Di Stefano made the world team of the 20th century. Diego Maradona You could make a valid argument for all of the top three in this seven not just being the greatest attacking midfielders of all time, but the greatest players. That is an argument that many people make about Diego Maradona, who was footballing dynamite. The diminutive Argentine had absolute mastery with the ball at his feet, even whilst travelling at pace. He was explosive, devastating and simply unstoppable at times. Whilst we don't consider Maradona to quite be the greatest footballer of all time over the course of his career, his peak was quite possibly the greatest of any player in history. El Diego at the 1986 World Cup is certainly a strong candidate for the pinnacle of the beautiful game. His ability on the ball, his match-winning credentials and sheer footballing genius earn Maradona top spot in this seven, and he's the player who'll be making our final all-time 11. So that's it for our top seven. You may disagree, in fact I'm sure you will, but 100 people could give their top seven and they'd all probably be different such as the immense talent pool available to pick from. Thanks for watching, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and don't forget to subscribe to HITC7s.